In this video, we're going to apply Monte Carlo simulation to examine some of the properties of ordinary least squares. So the idea here, just to sort of reiterate what I said in the last video, is that what we're going to do is we're going to define some sort of population process. And this population process, what we're going to do explicitly is, first of all, we are going to generate some x variables, and so our independent variables using the rand norm function of MATLAB. So that's just generating some normal random variables x. Then we're going to generate some normal random variables um, for the error term. And actually what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually multiply the x by 4 such that the variance in x is greater than the variance in the error term. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use both of these two things, the xi and the ei generated, in order to generate some yi. So we're going to generate yi by making it equal to alpha plus beta times xi plus epsilon i. And the idea here is that we're going to define both alpha and beta to be something which we know. And I'm actually going to start off just by defining them as being equal to 1 because that's nice and simple. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use these particular population processes to generate samples. So we're going to generate a first sample, we're going to generate a second sample, and we're going to generate a number of samples. Perhaps we're going to generate a thousand different samples, each of, let's say, a size of a hundred um, individuals in each sample. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply least squares estimators to each of these samples, and that's going to give us some particular estimate for the OLS, pra or the parameter beta, rather. Um, and they're going to be slightly different because each time these pseudo random numbers which have been generated are going to mean that we're going to have slightly different samples. So we're going to get, let's say from the first sample, a value of beta which is beta hat star 1. And then from the second one we'll get a, a different value which is beta hat star 2. And we're sort of continuing this on for each of the different samples. And then what we can do is we can say, well, what happens um, if we then draw a histogram of each of the different estimates for, I'm actually going to focus on beta here, um, what, what is the histogram of each of the different estimates going to look like? So a histogram is basically when you break up a continuous domain into something which is discrete, uh, and then you're going to look at the frequency which of, of occurrence essentially in each of the different bins. So I'm then going to look at the frequency of each of the different estimates for beta, which we're going to call beta hat, and we're going to see how these, or what this histogram first of all looks like for least squares, and we're going to first of all see whether or not it's unbiased, so whether it's centered around the true population parameter beta, um, which we know in this circumstance is just one, and we're also going to examine what happens to the variance of our least squared estimators as the sample size increases. So we're going to start off with a sample size of 100, and then we're going to see how our estimates change as we then define a new sample size of 1,000. OK, so I have our program here, which is doing exactly that which I've dictated in the video. And I've sort of commented it quite well. And hopefully, you'll be able to follow exactly what's going on if you want to run it for yourself. And you can just find this in the description below the video. So if we first of all run this program, we get a histogram which is generated. And what the histogram shows is it shows the sort of on the x-axis, it shows the different values of beta hat which have been estimated. And the y-axis shows the frequency of occurrence of for each of those individual bins, essentially. And we can see straight away that for our least squares estimator, it seems to be pretty much centered on the true population parameter value of 1. Uh, I hope you can read that at least. There's a 1 right here in the middle of this histogram. And if we run it again, pretty much the same thing happens, right? It, it doesn't look like it's changing that much between different simulations. The reason it's changing between different simulations is because we're generating slightly different pseudo-random numbers. OK, so it appears like least squares estimators, on the face of it at least, appear to be unbiased because the sampling distribution each time seems to be roughly centered on the true population parameter, uh, which in this case is just one. Now we want to examine what happens to least squared estimators as we increase the sample size. So we started off with a sample size of 100. Now I'm going to increase the sample size to that of 1,000. 
and we're going to see what happens to the width of our sampling distribution. I don't know if you can necessarily make that out, but the x-axis scale has actually changed between the running of the simulations. If I run it with a sample size of 100, then you can see that roughly our beta hat range is going from around, let's say, 0.9 all the way up to, let's say, maybe 1.08 or 1.1. But when I increase the sample size to 1,000, what happens is, essentially, we have a contraction in that x-axis scale because now the width of our histogram is, is much, much smaller. It's going from 0.98 only up to 1.02. So as we've increased the sample size, the width of our histogram essentially has decreased. And if I increase the sample size even further, so if I increase it up to, let's say, 10,000, hopefully we should see that the width of the histogram decreases even further. So now, I don't know if you can make out that scale, but essentially the histogram is only running from 0.99 up to less than 1.01. So the width has declined significantly. And even though this is really just a sort of qualitative description of what's going on, we could make our sort of um, interpretation of how the estimator is behaving a lot more quantitative. So we could actually say, well, how fast does our uh, width of our histogram actually decrease as we increase the sample size? But in this video, I just kind of wanted to provide a um, sort of overview of how we can examine least squares estimators using Monte Carlo. Um, we can kind of see here that as we increase the sample size, our least square estimators are becoming more efficient. So that probably hints at the fact that our least squares estimators are themselves consistent because each of these histograms is centered on the true population parameter, which in this case is one.